So the next action I'd like to talk about is what I like to call the elements of environments. Again, if we use sort of my prior video as a reference, uh, we have different types of agents depending on sort of our, our, our goals, you know, uh, a Minecraft playing agent versus a self-gardening agent versus a self-driving vehicle agent versus a tic-tac-toe agent. Each one of those are going to be operating in different environments. And so we have to look at what those types of environments could be. The first one that we're focusing in on is sort of the terminology known as observability. The entire idea is, well, if something is completely observable, so in this case, chess, for example, let me change my color. If we're dealing with, say, a chess playing agent, each action can be directly mapped. So again, I know that, you know, maybe I'm playing sort of white. Uh, I decide to move uh, king's pawn two spaces. I don't know if that's a good move or not. Uh, assume it is. And if it's not, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but again, all right, I can map that out. I've made a move. I can accurately predict what's going to happen if I do this. And I can then map out, oh, you know, black moves uh, left bishop pawn one space. Again, don't know if that's a good move or not. I'm going to say it is, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> no, my point being is, again, you can see every single one of these actions could be then mapped out into a tree-like form, and we could search that tree. However... As we start to get into more advanced agents, that's where completely observable is not really a, a possibility. So, for example, when we're dealing with self-driving cars, again, uh, wherever, you know, Luminar, uh, that, that logo is, let me change my color, I'll do a sort of bright blue. Let's say our agent is right here on the bottom of that picture. Well, again, if we're thinking about all the different sensors that we talked about, you know, one of them... In this case, I think Luminar does LiDAR sensors. You know, again, it's projecting out radio waves. It's shooting them out into the world. And, you know, when a radio wave hits something, it bounces back. So in this case, you can see, oh, well, you know, I can perceive sort of this side of the car, but I don't know what's going on right here. I hit, you know, one of my radio waves hit sort of this van, but I still don't know what's going on on the other side. There could be you know, a person over there. And if this is the only sort of perception and a, a sense that I've gotten out of the environment, I don't know. And that we call partially observed. But then we also get into a different type of world, specifically that idea of single or multiple agents. If, for example, we're dealing with, say, for our sake, uh, you know, just to make this a very, very simple drawing, Let's imagine that we're in an Amazon fulfillment center. So a little uh, kind of two sides. We'll call this the inventory, inventory side. And then over here, we've got fulfillment. And all throughout, we've got tiny little squares with wheels that their sole job is to go from inventory to fulfillment and then back. They just go back and forth. Well, again, if you think about this, inventory could be multiple boxes or multiple sort of crates lined up, and an agent may need to go to a particular one. So in this case, I've got two agents that have intersecting paths. Well, again, they in this sense, they probably communicate with each other so they don't crash into them. But that gets into, you know, if we're dealing with multiple agents, are they going to be cooperative or competitive? If you're thinking about this from, say, a video game's perspective, oh, well, you know, I have an agent that wants to attack the player character or another computer uh, AI agent. And so in that sense, again, they would want to be competitive because one wants to win versus the other one wants to also win. But that actually brings up an interesting point because let's imagine that uh, these green cars are all sort of agents 
in a self-driving sort of perspective? Well, they may not be communicating with each other. Again, you know, multiple people owning these cars or whatnot, you know, they may not uh, be owned by the same person or company, and so they may not communicate with each other. In that sense, should they treat them like it's another agent, or is it just a part of that environment that we were talking about in the prior video? Then we get into uh, some more terminology, something known as deterministic versus stochastic. The big idea here is more specific. It, it, it's partially uh, similar to, how do I describe it? It's sometimes dealing with the same thing that we saw with completely observable, but not at the same time. When we think about a state being deterministic, more specifically what's going on here is we're dealing with environments where, again, everything could be mapped out. And in our case, you know, based on the current state and whatever the action of the agent is going to be, again, it's very concise that we can make that decision versus something that's stochastic. In that case, uh, you know, the environment may change. So may change without sort of the uh, decisions of our agent. Maybe, for example, we're dealing with, uh, in this case, something like uh, 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 poker, uh, as an example. I can't control when my uh, opponents uh, or, you know, table mates are going to fold or bet, uh, raise my uh, initial bet and these types of things. So again, that's where uh, that sort of comes into play. Regardless of which one you're focusing in on, the big idea is we start to focus in on sort of the strategy or another term for this is policy. What do I do in certain situations? I may not be able to map out all the possible answers uh, for, say, for example, tic-tac-toe or chess. So in that case, you know, what gambits should I work off of instead? If we're thinking of something like a Connect 4 game, you might have some very similar approaches. Oh, you know, I want to play sort of in the center. I don't want to put it on the edges. I, you know, I want to build up and I want to attack diagonally, those types of things. Then we get into episodic versus sequential agents. So the big idea with an episodic agent, if you're thinking about, uh, you know, something like face recognition, recog, or, you know, that, that, uh, 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 tomato harvester, agent that we were talking about earlier, again, these would be what we consider to be episodic. Uh, it doesn't, you know, again, my agent scans the tomato plant and is evaluating only this tomato plant. It does not care what happened with sort of the plant before it. That's, you know, it'll keep statistics, but it's not going to, uh, you know, make decisions based off that. The same kind of concept going on with face recognition. Again, if I map out sort of this face, uh, you know, I don't care when I move to sort of the next face versus when we deal with something sequential. Chess, tic-tac-toe, connect four, that's what we're dealing with when we think about sequential uh, you know again uh if i was if i moved move king's pawn right that has impact on the environment and so the environment changes and so the next sort of stage has to occur and that's actually where we get into what we would consider a big fancy $5 word that we're going to be seeing a lot in our problems, the idea of something known as a time step. The entire idea is, again, if we're thinking about this as actions happening by our agent, we're dealing with sort of a T. At T0, given whatever the environment is going on around me, in this case, you can see... Uh, we're using a little example where the agent perceives the environment and is already sort of, it's facing a direction in this case. All right, well, in that case, it wants to move forward 
at T0, move forward. Okay, well, what happens? Well, that action occurs, the environment is updated, and we are now at T1. Well, what happens at T1? Again, the agent perceives the world around it. It sees, in this case, that it's uh, a little further in. It was on, if you can notice, here's a dirty tile. It's now on that tile. Clean it. And then, as you can see, as we move ahead, move forward forward and then as you can see well in this case uh, for our agent here when it hits t3 oh i can't move forward anymore so rather than move forward let's turn left and then you can you know obviously guess what happens next T4. What happens at T4? What happens at T5? Again, each one of these time steps comes into play. But just to give you a different example of that as well, uh, another world you could think of is I want to design out an agent to trade stocks because the economy's the economy. And so, okay, well, in that situation, how do you map out a time step? This is, uh, in this case, stochastic. The environment may not change or may change regardless of the actions of our agent. But more specifically, if we're kind of using sort of the S&P 500 uh, as an example here, you know, I'm mapping out uh, individual weeks as sort of the different actions that were going on during the stock market. For example, here's when COVID happened. Here's when everything started going wrong. <laughs> uh, and so again, if we're thinking about that, all right, well, each one of these time steps, I could have had my agent making a decision. So for example, quite literally here, let me perceive sort of what's happened in the past. Let me perceive what's going on right now. And what action should the agent do? Should it buy? Should it sell? Should it do? I, I don't. More to the point, uh, here's a little fun fact. Most algo traders only work about 60%. Uh, I don't know if you want to trust like your life savings to that, uh, but it's actually kind of interesting to think about. Moving on. So that's actually where uh, same kind of concepts going on. Uh, just like we were seeing with that stock market design uh, and time steps, the difference between something being a static environment and a dynamic environment. So stock agent, that's definitely a dynamic environment. The world's happening, let me, since I say semi over here, dynamic. The world is constantly updating. So your agent decides to buy or sell while well, the world is you know, changing while your agent is making those decisions. What if your agent decides to hold off or is still thinking? Time in the stock market is going to keep on going versus if we're dealing with something like a static environment. So uh, tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe, uh, you know, chess, technically, you know, sometimes. This is where, you know, I'm using just a, a little example. If you're playing with a clock, obviously, you know, there the environment is sort of moving at a, a rate, and you need to kind of plan things out before time runs out. But if you're playing a much more casual game, like when I play it with a child, uh, you know, I'm just letting the child think. I'm waiting, you know, I'm, I'm telling them to hurry up. But again, I'm waiting. Uh, I am uh, an environment that is static as we sort of decide what to do. That actually gets us into sort of the idea of discrete and continuous environments. Same kind of concept. Like I said, I'm waiting for, you know, the kid I'm playing chess with to make a move. On well, that case, those moves are very discreet. Each one of those is, again, uh, you know, kings, pawn, one up or down, you know, again, depending on which uh, 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 agent or side you're on, right? That's a, a very distinct motion. Move 
or you know move left right those are very distinct then we've got something like a continuous environment so self-driving car you know when we're thinking turn left what does turn left mean uh you know turn left could mean you know rotate five degrees 10 degrees 15 degrees 15.1 degrees 15.01 degrees, 15.001 degrees, etc. Same kind of concepts going on there. Again, if we're thinking about sort of that antenna designing agent that I showed earlier, you know, it had the ability to rotate the X, Y, and Z axes and then move forward. Well, how many millimeters is it rotating forward? And then how many degrees is it rotating each one of these axes on? A little bit more of a discrete value because, again, you could move at a much finer angle if the hardware sort of support, supports it. And then, obviously, we get into sort of this last one of whether or not uh, the environment is known or unknown. Uh, again, super... Uh, vague terminology here but again if we're thinking about something being known something like chess connect four these are environments where again every sort of tile is accounted for and while i may not know exactly what my uh you know opposing player is going to be doing i'm able to plan that out versus something being unknown and so in this situation this is getting a little bit more into exploration and having a little bit of knowledge representation coming in there. But if, for example, I'm, I don't know what's behind a door, you know, again, here's a door and here's my agent. It needs to sort of go through the door and move throughout, you know, levels or in this case stages all right, well, again, it doesn't know what the other room is going to look like or, you know, interact with. So it's obviously, again, this is where we would be dealing with sort of that terminology of strategy.